Hello, this is Bob Hall with Wholesome Farms. We uh, made a video yesterday of how to put a bulkhead in a aquaponics gravel bed. And we're doing the other side of the greenhouse today and a lot of people had questions. So we're going to go ahead and shoot a little bit more. And What we're doing now is we're marking, uh, trying to get the center of the uh, bed and we're about ready to drill holes we've um, if you saw the video the last video I guess we'll call it part one we uh, did one half of the greenhouse this half over here got these beds done and then uh, these plastic totes here we're replacing those because they didn't hold up and we're putting in nice wood beds and you can see the wood beds here um, we're using 2 by 12 lumber and cutting a piece of plywood in half. So these beds are 2 by 8 and we got the center. Go ahead and we'll drill the we'll drill a hole. This is for the bulkhead. Okay, and we'll do that on all four of them, and then we'll put uh, the liners in. Okay, one thing you want to do before you put in the liner is you want to make sure there's no rocks, bubbles, dust, that the beds are pretty smooth and cleaned out before you uh, put the liner in. So shop vac's a real good way of taking care of that. Okay, you can see we've made some progress. I've run out of rock, but that's okay because uh, I'll answer some of the questions now and having some empty beds will help with that. Um, wanted to show you. So one of the questions I had, somebody had asked me, was where do you get this pond liner? And the answer, that's a, it's a 12 mil triple weave pine, pond, pond liner. It's the same material that I use for the greenhouse. You see, it's it's a triple weave, 11 mil plastic. It's good for 12 to 15 years. It doesn't run when punctured, uh, tear. Uh, it's extremely durable, and same with the pond liner. It's made out of the same type of material, and uh, I sell it. So I'll put a link in the YouTube if anybody's interested. They can email me their dimensions. And um, I can quote them out, uh, but I'll tell you, it's, it comes out to be like 38 cents a square foot. And the way you, you do it is you want to be, uh, make sure you have plenty of overhang on each side uh, when you put the liner in. So another question I had was, what about, you? I mentioned the stem pipe, but I didn't have any to show. So here is the stem pipe and that goes right down in there you can see that and what will happen is as the water fills up to keep it from overflowing it'll start flowing down through here until the timer shuts it off now I've got a breakaway here I'll show you how that works if you can see I've got a quarter inch hole drilled here and one on the other side and that's what we'll do to each of these is we'll put it in the quarter inch hole with the stem pipe and you can see how it sets up so the plywood would be right there and we would drain out the bottom and with these two quarter inch holes that's plenty of uh, drainage so when uh, the pump comes on these will fill up and uh, we'll fill them much faster than quarter inch holes can can drain and then the pump will shut off and go to different beds and uh, this will have a chance to drain and it'll drain through these quarter inch holes until the bed is completely dry of water I mean it'll still be plenty moist but the water will be out and by the time that's done it'll be time for the bed to fill up again so that'll sit in there just in there like, like that, you can see them side by side. And uh, this is just your protection, so it, you know this is plenty big enough 
that uh, the amount of water we're putting in, if if the pump stuck on or something happened, all the water would flow through there and we wouldn't over flood into the greenhouse and, and spill our good water. But uh, those are a couple of questions that uh, I had. And then one that I didn't have, but I want to show you. I'm going to walk back here again because I always want to make sure you guys see my failures as well as my successes. So maybe you don't make the same mistakes I do. Let me get down here. Can you see a height difference between these two rows? What happened is to build a wood bed, you should use 12 inch wide by two inch thick wood uh, just regular pines fine uh, i wouldn't use treat it with the chemicals and stuff so it should be two by 12 by however long in this case eight foot each beds so two by 12 by eight well if you notice on the side here on the right i thought i was buying 12 but i wound up buying 10 and i didn't notice it till we were well under construction and you know what it's an aquaponic system and we'll live with it 10 will work 12 is better but 10 will work and that's what we'll live with but uh so when you go as i always tell my guys measure correctly twice cut once uh, i didn't follow my own advice and i uh thought i was buying two by 12 and i bought two by 10 but um we're gonna live with it it'll work we'll show you uh, pretty soon we'll be able to we'll have the plumbing done we'll show you some of that and we'll have plants in here and we'll have the system running again and um, hopefully if there's any more questions let me know and I'll try to answer them and uh, we'll we'll uh, help you out all right it's been a few days we finally got the project finished you can see we got all the beds repaired and going got some uh, plants planted this is uh, like the, right in the middle of July, so it is hot. It's all 100 degree days going on right now. But you can see on the left side, I've got different pepper plants. On the right side, I've got some tomato plants growing. And uh, some of them are having a struggle. Some of them are doing fine. One of the things about aquaponics is the water is about 80 degrees and as the water uh, goes through the rock it even cools more so the plants because they get their temperature sensation from the roots they don't really realize that it's over 100 degrees here in the greenhouse they um, now physics physics will take over at a point you see some of these that aren't doing so well here that's because they were just suckers. They didn't have roots when I planted them and just stuck them in the ground and uh, we'll see if they survive or not. It's a little warm for them. Now, I've got uh, eight beds, so there's four zones. So two beds go off at a time. And to make sure that the, uh, the water uh, flows evenly, I don't know if you can tell, but right here, I've drilled in the pipe that's a 3 8 inch hole so every one of these uh, extensions has a 3 8 inch hole and what that does is that equalizes the uh, pressure when the valve switches to the next station otherwise I tried I tried uh, hand valves and those things are like four bucks a piece and you can never adjust them properly Plus, as the stuff flows and you get the, the fish waste, it gums up. And the simplest, cheapest process I've come up with is just to be able to, you see here, the, the hole, just drill the same size hole, and then everything gets the same amount of pressure. And uh, it works beautifully. In these beds, I'll, I'll do an a aquaponic video here uh, in a few weeks when I get uh, things growing and looking a little better but uh, these beds fill up they drain into the raft beds the raft beds drain back to the fish so it creates a perfect little ecosystem 
anyway, I hope we've answered some of your questions and uh, showed you how to rebuild. Oh, I might want to show you down here the drainage. Every uh, every bed has its own drain. We're just draining into a two-inch pipe, and uh, one one side fires off, and the other side fires off. So we. It, it, everything stays equal and and balances out and flows perfectly so we've got uh, finally got our greenhouse up and running again and uh, this aquaponic system is all part of our sustainable agriculture sustainable farming practices here on wholesome farm this is Bob Hall thanking you for watching and uh, if you like what we're doing please subscribe to our channel and, and share our video and and hit the like button for us we'd appreciate it